What's happening gamers? Hope you're all having an absolutely fantastic day. I uh, know I am. We're picking up where we left off in our last episode with 125 quest points, a gothic staff in hand and a sign of life in our pocket. In this episode I want to start making some moves towards getting the stats required for desert treasure and lunar diplomacy down the line to unlock ancient magics and that beautiful lunar armor. And maybe just maybe we'll see if we can't push to 150 quest points to unlock Vanquish so I have a good weapon for every combat style. And what better way to start off than by getting 1300 total level over a few dailies. You're probably all as sick of dailies as I am though. So here's a really quick montage of my daily routine to show you all what I get up to at the start of every play session. Buy supers on the way to Nemi. Nemi. Thank Crystal. Check base camp. Can't quite build upgrade. Gauge number one. Daily challenges, H1. Jack of trades, jack of trades, jack of trades. Three player on farm. Shop runs, Viz, put Reaper off till tomorrow. Cage number two. Okay, uh, should we get, should we go do Cold War? Cause I feel like that'll improve my penguin life a little bit. Well, Cold War itself won't help my penguin life. But it's three sequels, Hunt for the Red Rack Tuba, Some Like It Cold, and Back to the Freezer, unlike a polar bear agent and extra penguin spies to find each week. More agents means more XP. However, I had to build a workbench in my house so I could make a penguin spy disguise to spy on the penguin spies we so despise before I could get going. Alright, shall we get the Cold War on the way? Well, that's Cold War complete, one quest point. 2,000 crafting, XP, 5,000 agility, 1,500 construction. Oh! After finishing Cold War, it was time to knock out Hunt for the Red Rack Tuba to unlock the Polar Bear Agent to find each week. Nice! Hunt for the Red Rack Tuba completed. One quest point, 3,000 construction, and 2,000 thieving XP. 1,500 Hunter XP. And we can now spot the polar bear. Unfortunately, I didn't have the crafting level to continue the penguin quest series, as some like it cold requires 56 crafting, and I was only level 47, so I decided to go do Fremenic Trials to get the ball rolling on the quests required for Lunars. First, however, I needed a raw shark, so I did a run of temple trekking to get that, as that seemed the easiest way to get one. But okay, sharks? Nice! 45 raw sharks. We spoke to Chieftain Brunt and started the trials to become a Fremenic, which entailed drinking and poetry contests, puzzles, and a surprisingly underwhelming fight with Koshi the Deathless. Three more quest points, 2800 agility XP, attack, crafting, fletching, fishing, strength, thieving, woodcutting, holy crap, how bloody long is this? Oops, I clicked away. A level in defense, a level in strength, and three fletching levels, nice. Uh, where are we way away from? Lunar Diplomacy, but we will get there, we will get there. Shall we see about Monkey Madness? Alright, you got a quest for me, King Narnode. Apparently he does. Okay, okay. Go to a bunch of stuff. Monkey Madness, let's go! Now, Monkey Madness is one of those old nostalgic quests. It has a surprisingly fun storyline that has you averting a war and killing a demon. It grants access to Ape Atoll and some dragon weaponry, along with some nice XP and melee skills after. Several hours later... Oh, lava lay. 20,000 strength, 20,000 constitution, 35,000 attack. Bro, okay, so I'm level 50 attack. I can use rune weapons now. Epic. While I was busy knocking out quests, I got an invite to do some four man crosses. So I popped over to Puro Puro really quickly to get a magical butterfly net, which would make taking the hunter node a lot easier. So far, we've only done public Croesus instances for Reaper tasks, which has been a great source of Slayer XP and Reaper points, but the contribution score we have been getting leaves us with an abysmal chance of getting a unique item. With no hunter outfit, no crystal mask, no dive, no double surge, no furnace core, no familiar, and just 55 hunter, we're a little bit under geared for four man Croesus, but one of our amazing Twitch mods, Jake, has offered to for me on the fishing node so all I had to do was gather my 32 run and repair and not get planked let's see how that hour went okay I think I ready that's 399 that's my highest contribution score ever oh we got manuscript Ooh, 379 oh I got a clue scroll oh <gasps> why no Yo! Timsy just got a drop! Nice! That's a uh, that 
Yeah, the cr the Croesus. Bro, Nev, only 740 mil an hour. I wouldn't recommend. Holy crap. I can't wear that for ages, man. What the... F oh, man, that is amazing, though. Talk about a best possible first drop. What was done in Daily's off stream? I managed to get an invite to a Beastmaster Durzag run. Another thing that I'm more than a little bit undergeared for, but I definitely want to do for a chance at unlocking the Corruption Shot and Corruption Blast abilities. My first port of call was getting some Spirit Cow fights made so that I had some form of Beast of Burden familiar to carry extra food. They're not great, as they only carry six items, but they are better than nothing. After that, it was off to Anima Islands over on Tusker's Bag. A cute minigame left over from an old world event that gives some cool combat abilities and XP and a selection of skills. In particular I was after Devotion, a threshold defensive that allows protection prayers to block 100% of incoming damage. But I will have to come back here for the other abilities later on. Tusk is Rance for Slayer in particular, but Sacrifice is quite nice too. The first kill went rather smoothly. I just kept away from the air route during the early parts of the fight and hung away from the pets when they spawned in and played it safe. I got some tasty outs from the chest, but nothing too special. The second kill was going alright until Beastmaster spawned. And then this happened. As you can see, the pet hops to the far side of the DPS pile. I run through and swap to melee prey, but I swap back to range prayer, the same tech I get hit by a melee swipe, and my sign of life pops, and I had to teleport out. The team easily finished the kill without me, but I didn't get any outs from the second chest. I guess beggars can't be choosers. Pretty close call, but we are fine. Anyways. I'm going to head to the land of snow because I got 48 fire making from uh, Anima Islands last night when I was unlocking Devotion. So today I can just burn my maples and my maples alone will take me to 50 fire making. So let's go get those two levels really quickly. Level 49 fire making, actually a huge level because this is required for both Lunar Diplomacy and Tears of Guthix. 50 fire making! Huge! We now have all the levels we need for desert treasure! Oh, that's exciting. I think, though, that I have a couple more quests I have to get done before we can actually do desert treasure. Yeah, but we'll be busting into that on our next stream. Here we go. 100 points, leaving the cache. 43.5k XP taking us to 80 divination. Absolutely massive. One of the requirements for Light Within and Twilight of the Gods. The highest divination requirement for any quest in the game. Right. The next quest we have on our list to do is the Haunted Mine. Back on stream and back to quests, I wanted to knock out the Haunted Mine to unlock the Salve Amulet, a handy necklace that gives a small damage bonus against Undead and can later be enchanted to increase its strength. I figured I also wanted to make a start towards Sunspear while I was in the area, so I went on to do Darkness of Hallavale afterwards as well. Oh my goodness, there is Haunted Mine completed! You'll love to see it! Two quest points and a wee lamp with 22,000 strength XP taking us all the way to 45! Four levels, one go, let's go! Lovely! Darkness of Hallavale completed two more quest points, 7,000 agility, 6,000 thieving, and 2,000 construction XPs. Access to Birdera Ramble minigame. Alright, I think we should do Troll Stronghold. It is required for desert treasure and all sorts of goodies. Alright, one quest point, two lamps for 10,000 XP each. Access to God Wars. Heck yes, but I don't have 60 agility or strength, so I still don't have access to God Wars. Never mind. Do we do Troll Romance? Seeing as that is uh, needed for a few things in the future. Troll Romance completed two quest points, 8,000 agility XP. 4,000 strength XP. I think the next thing is actually going to be a little bit of dungeoneering so I can get my gem bag. Starting out the grind for the gem bag, I already had 900 of the 2,000 required dungeoneering tokens collected from daily challenge rewards, which did save me a bit of time. One of our awesome viewers came and gave us a bit of a hand with a few flaws, which sped things along further, and we had 2,000 tokens in no time. Shall we buy this bad boy? I think we should. I'm super excited. Oh, I'm going to be able to go train crafting. But I think uh, we'll get Dragon Slayer out of the way because that's a big one. And Prage to heck that the hardcore survives. I got Sign of Life, I got Ring of Life, we got Wars Retreat Tally at the ready, we got heaps of food. I have to click my food because we're in legacy mode. It's okay. It's just old school, man, that's sweet. <sighs> that was a 96 ago. That was like almost a 1k in EOC damage. Alright, Dragon Slayer! 
we're done. We survived. Two quest points. Massive strength XP and defense XP lamps. Rune plate body that I can't equip. Oh, 18,650 strength XP took us to two levels up to 48. And the defense lamp took us up three defense levels, also to 48. And we are combat level 78. Massive. After stream, I wanted to put my newly acquired gem bag to use and knock out the 60 mining requirement for lunar diplomacy. I did this at Uncommon Gem Rocks in Alcarid, as it's decently fast mining XP and the gems provide fantastic early game crafting XP for an Iron Man. Oh, there we go. 60 mining. This segue nicely into our next little skilling grind, getting 61 crafting, also for lunar diplomacy, which we did by cutting all the gems we've just mined. Now, while lunar diplomacy is high on the priority list, there are a few more easy quests I need to knock out first, like Throne in Miscellanea and Royal Trouble for the Kingdom Management minigame, and I may even go so far as to do Desert Treasure for Ancients before I go to get lunars. Oh, there we go. Level 61 crafting. Oh, feels absolutely fantastic. While doing a cheeky Mole Reaper on stream, I realized I'd hit 200 boss kills and I could unlock the altar at war, so I don't need to teleport to Falador to recharge my prayer anymore. Boom! Unlock the altar of war so we can do it! We can we can recharge our prayer and summoning here at wars now. Oh, that actually feels so huge. I think I was about to do some quests, wasn't I? So we're just gonna start out by doing Shield of a Wrath. It's needed for heroes and legends and all of the quests. There's one that you just kinda gotta get done. Alrighty, here we go. Shield of a Wrath completed. One quest point and 1200 coins. Ah, one small step. In a, in a very long path it's needed for everything now let's get lost city underway so we can start looking at uh fairy rings and zanaris shall we boom there we go lost city done three more quest points access to fairy rings ability to wield dragon long swords and dragon daggers where we get 60 attack all right i think next up i want to get heroes quests done then i'll start moving on to uh the throne of miscellanea and royal trouble and get kingdom unlocked kingdom management is one of the best sources of early game resources for an iron man it can provide a great selection of herbs teak mahoganies for construction seeds for feeding player on farm animals and maples on mass for simple components fully unlocking it requires completion of the heroes quest throne of miscellanea and royal trouble so i ran off to prove myself to the heroes guild and then bring peace to the two kingdoms so i could skim a little bit off the coffers each week okay let's get tears of gothics underway so i can unlock that weekly and get that tiny bit of xp in my lowest skill each week that's going to be absolutely delightful Tears of Guthics completed, and that takes us to the massive 150 quest point milestone. Will it? Will it? Let me just play the the mini game really quickly. Tell story. Yes, let me in. Let me in. Let me play my Tears of Guthics weekly for the first time ever. 16k fletching XP, bro. Eight levels. What the hell? Straight to 38? Okay, heck yeah. Shall we go to Maze now? Oh, I'm stoked. I'm stoked. Today's been huge. It's been huge. Claim all rewards. Lovely. Unlocks. Let's get Vanquish. Can't use it till it's full its potential just yet, but soon. Let's roll our magical tier two dice. What do we get for 150 quest points? We get 500k. A a gothic's cloak it is what it is i suppose it's a fort and we get melee no lol we get vanquish oh my gosh what a roller coaster we made some huge gains this episode with that crypt bloom top unlocking the tears of gothics and vanquish which i still can't actually equip until i get 75 and some combat stats but i'll add that to the to-do list we made some progress towards lunar diplomacy and ancient magic, so we'll pick that up in our next episode. Boot the buttons to do the things if that's your thing, and I'll see you all in the next episode.